I wrong for admitting I got married for money and ruining my cousin's idea of love? When I was in my second year of university, I found out I was pregnant with my current husband's baby. We weren't officially dating at the time because my husband was a pretty arrogant playboy back then who only did casual. After the initial shock and discussions on if I would keep the baby, my husband and his family were very insistent we got married since they're strong believers in a two-parent household and also because my father-in-law is a semi-public businessman and he thought this would reflect badly on him. I said no initially for obvious reasons, but I eventually agreed to it when my father-in-law offered to pay off all my student debt and make sure I could finish my degree after I had the baby. He offered me a lot of other financial incentives and we have a prenup which will make sure I'll be okay if our marriage doesn't work out. Honestly, I had little hope. My husband actually changed a lot after we got married and after our daughter was born, so we've been very happily married ever since. Not many people know the real reason I got married so quickly in my family. Everyone thinks we were just really loved up and moved fast. My younger cousin is 18 and she wants to drop out of university to marry her boyfriend of two years. Her parents are against this, but she keeps using me as an example of why it's a good idea. I heard this from my mom initially and I wasn't going to get involved since we aren't that close, but it came up during a family Zoom party. She was talking about how my husband and I's love for each other made things work out for us and it would be the same for them. When I said, actually, I got married for money. I received mixed reactions from my family. My cousin is devastated and said I ruined her idea of love and being in a relationship with Pointless now. One of my uncles took it incredibly personal and said I was a gold digger and he felt awful for my husband and how he doesn't know where my mom went wrong with me. For context, my mom was a single mother and seeing her struggle was part of the reason I agreed to getting married. A few of my other relatives said that that's something you should keep to yourself because it's disrespectful to my husband and our marriage. I kind of agree on that point. My cousin's mom is really happy with me though. So what do you guys think? Am I the asshole here? No, because you're being honest, right? That was your situation that's what you live through and if someone asks you and using you and using you as an example be like oh she did it she made it out okay you're like nah i did it because stability is the most attractive thing in a man that's why you did it i promise you if he didn't have the money and those incentives you probably would have made the same decision don't blame me for it either though so it's okay that my boyfriend insists on me washing myself before any sexy time my boyfriend and i've been together for six months but we've broken up four times all together we've probably only spent about three months together he pursued me really hard. We met at work and the first day we met, he asked me out. I kept saying no because I really don't want to focus on guys right now. I have a really good career in fashion, so dating was not in my plans. He kept on insisting and doing very nice things for me, like he would bring me my favorite coffee or bring me my favorite foods. I finally said yes when he brought me a basket full of my favorite snacks from Whole Foods. He told me that he basically went around asking everyone what they saw me eating. And then he went to Whole Foods and bought everything and made a basket for me. I was really flattered, so when he asked me out again, I said yes. I thought maybe he'd be a really, really kind and just consider guy but things are not like that we went on a total of five dates before anything happened when it finally came time to doing it we were at my apartment and he insisted that i go take a shower when i asked him why he said he prefers for everything to be clean obviously i got offended and said i am clean he then rolled his eyes and said okay never mind and then we did it part two is up it's okay that my boyfriend insists that i wash myself before any sexy time when he told me he wanted me to be clean i said i am clean so we proceeded to do it everything was pretty normal after that he was really affectionate and kept complimenting me a few days later it was going to be our second time but before anything starts to happen he once again asked me to go take a shower i asked him if i smelled bad or something and he said no i just think that you should take a shower i decided to keep my cool and i went and took a shower but the routine stuck every single time we were going to do anything he would ask me to go take a shower now i wonder what you might be thinking no i do not smell bad i usually take two showers a day anyway one in the morning after working out and then one at night before getting into bed so i know i don't smell bad but now it's a total inconvenience every time we want to do it he asked me to go take a shower even if i'm dressed even if i have makeup on so i started avoiding it at all cost anytime he would ask me to do it i would just say no because of this we actually broke up for two months when we got back together it was the same exact thing once again i was taking a shower every single time part three is that it okay that my boyfriend insists on me washing myself before any sexy time i actually even began associating sexy time with being dirty because he would insist so much i would actually start to feel shame I knew that i was clean and i washed myself multiple times a day even when i knew i wasn't going to see him i decided to reach out to an ex-girlfriend of his on instagram and I asked her if she had the same problem with him and she proceeded to send me paragraphs and paragraphs of all the things that he made her do Not only would he make her shower before sexy time But he would make her brush her teeth before kissing and fully removing her makeup, too I told her that my theory was that he must have had a bad experience with some other girl Then she told me her theory that he likes being in control and that the only reason he asked us to do all these things Was so that he could feel in control by the way her and I are now friends So here's what I did the next time I saw my boyfriend I asked him to take a shower and guess what? He got totally offended. I pulled him up on the fact that he makes me shower every single time and he said that I should be happy to do whatever it takes to make him happy. Now I refuse to take a shower whenever he wants me to. And because of that, he's always in a bad mood. He even told my best friend that I wasn't a considerate girlfriend. How dare he complain to her? 
Now here's the thing. I'm very attracted to him and I feel like I'm falling in love with him, but this is the only thing that's holding me back. He even mentioned moving in together. What should I do? Am I wrong for folding on the pages of a book my friend let me borrow? <gasps> you did not. I, 20 male, am taking a modern literature class this semester for my general education requirements and I had to buy like 40 novels for it. My university's bookstore didn't have the option to rent them and I didn't want to spend a lot of money on buying books I'm not planning on ever reading again. I asked my friend who is an English major and has probably at least every book known to man if she had any of the books I needed and she pretty much had all the ones that were required. I asked if I could borrow them for the semester and she agreed. I started reading the first one and when I would finish at a certain point, I would just bend down the top corner of the page just a little so I could remember where my place was. You motherfucker, that's where you fucked up. That's what bookmarks are for. I didn't think this was a really bad thing. I have always seen this done with books if you don't have a bookmark. And once you pick it back up, you put the paper back in place and it's fine. I was studying on campus one day and I ran into my friend. She came and sat down next to me and we were talking and just chilling and then all of a sudden she sees the book I'm currently reading for class, one of the ones she gave me and she starts to freak out asking why I bent the corners down. I told her it was just to keep my place and she starts going through all the corners that I had put down and put back up like, look, I can see here, here and here and honestly I thought it was a little dramatic. I understand she likes to keep her books in good condition but she didn't say I couldn't when she lent them to me and some of the books even have annotations in them from when she read them so it isn't like the books are in mint condition. This is like book sharing 101. You don't bend pages in the book. Oh, this guy is so out of touch with reality. When I told my friend that, she just got even more upset and said I should have known and that it was common sense not to put the pages down. I apologize for not knowing, but she wouldn't hear it. She told me she wanted all of her books back and I tried to tell her I would use a bookmark from now on, but she wouldn't listen at all. Yeah, I, I don't blame her. Now I have to spend over $100 on some books that will just get tossed or donated after the semester is over. Story time about how I caught my mom hooking up with my guy best friend. Claire, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. My best friend and I have known each other for seven years. Let's call him Mark. Mark and I met when we were in school and we have been inseparable since then. Everyone's constantly telling us that we should date, but we're not into each other like that. Last year, my parents started fighting a lot because my dad found out that my mom cheated on him. And she cheated on him with my dad's best friend. My mom's the kind of woman that constantly seeks attention from men. And growing up, she weirdly competed with me. Like any time I liked a boy, she would flirt with him in front of me. So yeah, my mom's not the best when it comes to stuff like that. So when my dad found out that my mom was cheating on him, I basically just wanted to keep the peace. And I convinced my dad to not get a divorce. Huge mistake. Fast forward to two months ago. Mark was just about to turn 20, so I had been planning a birthday party for him. Because of COVID, I was only inviting our immediate family and close friends. And of course, my mom had to interject and wanted to help me plan everything. I told her several times I didn't need her help, but she insisted. Let me just say this. Before any of this happened, it never occurred to me that my mom was even attracted to Mark. I saw him as like a brother to me, so I assumed that she would see him the same way. My mom and dad kept arguing every single day. Mark would come over and he would just let me vent to him. The day of Mark's birthday party is when I started noticing some weird things. My mom, of course, had to drink a lot of champagne, so she was getting a little tipsy. She insisted on dancing with Mark and like making this big scene, so they started dancing. More people joined the dance floor and it became like a real party. A few hours later, I see my mom and Mark sitting on the couch, but my mom is crying her eyeballs out, complaining about my dad, and Mark is just there listening to her. I mean, she's putting him in a weird position. I I literally had to peel my mom off of Mark and take her home and put her into bed. Thankfully, Mark just thought it was funny, so he didn't get upset. A few weeks later, I come home and find Mark in the kitchen with my mom. Once again, my mom is drinking and complaining about my dad. And once again, Mark is just listening to her. But here's the thing. My mom was standing there in a bikini, supposedly ready to get in the pool park. So my mom is standing there in a bikini trying to seduce my guy best friend. Disclaimers is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. I asked my mom nicely to go put on some clothes and she refused. So I grabbed Mark's hand and told him to come upstairs with me. I asked him what was going on between him and my mom and he said nothing. And he even said that I was ridiculous for even suggesting something like that. And I believed him, so I let it go. A few days later, my mom is dressed up all sexy in a red tight dress, supposedly making breakfast for my dad and I. But um, my dad had already left for work, and I was going to school, so she knew that. I had the feeling that she had Mark coming over, and she didn't want me to know. So I got in my car and told her I was leaving for school. Instead, I waited around the corner, and I saw Mark driving up to the house. I waited for about 10 minutes, and then I quietly pulled into the driveway and opened the door. And what do you know? My mom is sitting on the countertop making out with my guy best friend. And they were going at it. Like if I hadn't gotten there, it would have happened, you know? I slammed the door and my mom jumps off the counter. Mark pretends that nothing's wrong and tells me that he has to go to school. But of course, I didn't let him leave. That's when my mom told me that they were in love. And what do you know? Mark confirmed it. That's when my mom basically begged me not to tell my dad anything and that her and Mark were going to continue seeing each other. I told my mom I'd keep the secret, but instead I drove straight to my dad's job and told him everything. He went straight to his lawyer and filed for divorce. When he confronted her, my mom basically said that I was lying and that I had for some reason made everything up. Mark, on the other hand, is totally 
in love with her, but she's telling him to leave her alone. So she also broke his heart. He doesn't even want to go back to school and he's begging me to get my mom and him back together. I told him that that would never happen because my mom is never going to leave my dad. My dad makes a lot of money and she has no job. He provides her a lifestyle that Mark could never. Now here's the thing, my mom's accusing me of being a terrible daughter for telling my dad, but how could I not tell my dad? I mean, am I the asshole here? I doubt it, but what do you guys think? What should I do? Story time about my unhealthy obsession with my ex-boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 18 and in 12th grade. And him and I had been dating for about four years. And it was around Thanksgiving, so it was pretty much college decision time. I got accepted into UCLA and I was really happy because it was super close to home. And my boyfriend, who we're gonna call Devin, got accepted there also. So I was super excited that we did not have to do the long distance thing. Until a week later, he calls me and apparently he got some soccer scholarship. So now he's going to Berkeley. So I was like, okay, maybe we can make long distance work. Well, then he tells me that he doesn't want to make it work and he thinks that we should just break up. Well, a week after that, him and I were sleeping together again. So I thought that meant that we were back together. The one day I was leaving his house and I heard his mom talking about me and she was like, oh, is she coming to the Christmas party? And I was super, super happy. Until Devin says, oh, we're not together anymore and I'm thinking of inviting a different girl. Well, a week later, the party rolls around and I decide that I'm going to show up anyways. Light for part two. Part two about my unhealthy obsession with my ex-boyfriend. So like I said, he thought that he was bringing some random girl to his Christmas party. And I decided that I was going to show up there anyways. So I'm sitting in the car outside of his house the day of the Christmas party. Pretty much just giving myself a little pep talk. Eventually I go up, I knock on the door, his dad answers, gives me a big hug, and tells me that he's downstairs with all of his cousins playing the video game. So I go downstairs and as soon as I get down the stairs, all of his cousins look at me. And they give me the look of like, oh shit, she is not supposed to be here right now. And then I see the bathroom door closed with the light on. So I walk over, open the door, and what do I see? A girl from our school giving my boyfriend a head. Well, my ex-boyfriend, but still, he was my boyfriend. So I didn't even give her time to get up before I started wailing on her. A few punches and kicks later, my boyfriend starts screaming in pain. After that, I got kicked out of the house and I had to pay some medical bills because she bit my boyfriend. And I'm still on probation for beating her ass. Am I the asshole for refusing to return the $600 gift I bought my mom for Christmas? To start, I want to mention that unlike my wife, I have a very good relationship with my mom. And because my siblings can always afford pricey gifts for my mom, this year I decided to gift her something nice and expensive for once on Christmas. Though I'm currently unemployed, but I worked for the past few months and my wife and I have a joint account. I already know this is gonna go down. You taking money from the joint account to buy your mom a gift that you cannot afford? Okay. The problem began when my wife found out that I purchased a $600 necklace for my mom to gift her on Christmas using our joint account. She went off on me saying I should have told her and I shouldn't have taken the money from our joint account that she uses to pay the bills and rent, especially now that we're struggling. Dumbass! Like what? I asked why should I tell her since it's for both of us, but she reminded me that despite that being true, one, I no longer work, and two, 600 is a lot and I should have consulted her, but the reasons I didn't are, one, I feel that it's my money too and I can make purchases using a joint account, and two, I know if I told my wife she refused to let me buy the gift solely because she hates my mom. She yelled at me saying that it is her hard-earned money I threw away and needed to return the necklace, but I refused because mom already knows about it. She responded that this is no longer our joint account since I no longer earn money and that if I want to give mom expensive items, the need to earn money myself. She insisted I return it, but I said no and it escalated to me calling her bitter and controlling after she pointed out I never got her anything in this price range. She's insisting I return it and at least get a cheaper one, but I'm done being the one with the least expensive slash valuable gifts to gift in the family. She's making this her hill to die on. So, am I the asshole? Yes, you dumb piece of shit. What is wrong with you? This looks like he has a problem with himself because everyone else can afford getting their mom nice gifts and he feels like he's at the bottom of the totem pole because he can't do that. That sounds like a you problem. Go get a job. You think I would want a gift from someone who doesn't have a job and I see like, oh shit, my son is jobless and he bought me a $600 necklace. I don't want that. Go pay your bills. You have a wife, you have family. As a mom would not want her kid to spend that kind of money that they don't have. Men are fucking stupid sometimes. Asshole. Asshole, asshole, asshole. Story time about how I caught my husband cheating on me with a neighbor. My husband is a really, really rich guy. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I first met my husband when I was 20 years old and he was 10 years older than me. He was basically my sugar daddy. Once I graduated college, he asked me to work at his company. He did all of the marketing, but eventually we wanted to have kids, so we decided to move to a bigger house. We ended up moving to a really secluded neighborhood with lots of rich families. One of our neighbors owned a yoga studio. There was also a young couple living across the street from us and they were also business owners. It was the perfect situation until I noticed that my husband was paying less and less attention to me. Well, I didn't hesitate to ask him why. He denied it and said that I was making things up in my head. So I installed an app in his phone that would send all of his text messages and emails straight to my phone. And guess what I saw? 
Text messages between him and the neighbor who owned the yoga studio. She was 10 years older than my husband, so I never saw it coming. I started collecting all the evidence into folders, pictures, and text messages. I wanted to catch him in the act. So one day I said I was going to a spa for the entire day. Part two is I I told my husband I was going to be at the spa all day long. I wanted to see if he was going to bring the neighbor around to cheat on me some more. When I got in the car to leave, I get a message that he sent to the neighbor. Like I said, I had planted an app in his phone, so I was receiving all the messages he was sending and receiving. And of course, he sends her a message saying, hey, my wife's going to be at the spa all day. We're free. And she replies saying, perfect, I'll come over. My stomach dropped. I drove around for a bit and waited for her to get to my house. Then I see she sends him a message saying she's there. That was my cue to go back to my house to catch him in the act. I race back and enter the house super quietly. I go into the living room and don't see anything so i assumed they were in our bedroom i go up to the bedroom and no one's there and i see they're in the backyard in the pool i pull out my phone and press record i run downstairs and i surprise them in the act they were both naked and my husband jumps out of the pool and wraps himself in a towel our neighbor stays in the pool my husband says i was gonna tell you i swear it gets worse part three is up i catch my husband doing dirty things in the pool with our neighbor i'm recording all of this by the way he says he was gonna tell me so i show him all the evidence that i had been gathering all the messages and the pictures but little did he know i had already hired a lawyer i'd known about the affair for about a month at this point i had already been working on the divorce with the lawyer documenting every single transgression my husband committed against me with our neighbor and when i told my husband he freaked the neighbor aka the woman my husband was with she got out of the pool and went home i printed out some flyers with all the pictures she had sent my husband and spread them around her yoga studio i now get ten thousand dollars for my husband my Am I the asshole for still not letting my sister into my house after she made me miss my daughter's birth? Frankly, I don't know if I'm being an asshole. Family seems to think I am, so just want to know what others here think. My sister is 25 and was going to meet her dad, who was not my dad, for the first time in almost 18 or 19 years, and she was really nervous. She asked me to go with her for support. He was staying at some hotel about 30 minutes away, and the whole ride over there, my sister had my phone to give me directions. My wife was calling me because she'd gone into labor. Then my mother-in-law was calling me too. My sister put my phone on Do Not Disturb without me knowing and erased the notifications. I didn't even realize it until after we were leaving from having lunch with him an hour and a half later that she'd been calling me. All my sister told me was that I had a missed call. When I found out, I was yelling at her the whole ride to the hospital. Her only excuse was that this was a big emotional moment for her meeting her dad and she was scared doing it alone knowing how her anxiety is. This was the only time they'd have to see each other since he was leaving in a few days and wouldn't be back for months. I really couldn't believe it. By the time we got there, my daughter had already been born a half hour ago. Don't get me wrong, I was so happy to know my daughter and wife were okay, but I was also devastated to have missed the birth of my first child. I couldn't even look at my sister. I told her to get an Uber to take her home because I didn't want her near me right now. My daughter is almost four weeks old and almost everyone has come to see her. Last weekend, my parents came over with my sister in the car, but I said I don't want her in my home right now. They got mad and left early. I kept hearing it from my family that I'm being completely unfair treating my sister like an outcast by not letting her in my home. But I'm just still angry at her right now and don't think I have it in me to be in her presence. So am I the asshole? story time about how i ghosted my boyfriend of five years i know that sounds so bad but he was a thief a liar and a cheater disclaimer this is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram like i said my boyfriend and i have been together for five years we met in college and were basically inseparable for the first two years on our third year of dating i started working as a personal assistant for a big celebrity in la this meant i had to move to la you see we lived in texas at the time well things got really bad after i moved he wouldn't take my phone calls he would totally ignore my text messages and he would go out all the time for the first few months i tried to keep the peace so i wouldn't say anything but eventually it got to the point where we wouldn't speak for an entire week. Luckily, my best friend still lived in Texas, so I had her follow him around for two days. And you'll never guess what she found. Shout out to my bestie. She showed up to his apartment early in the morning and waited for him to go to work, which he did. When he was done with work, she went back to his job to follow him back home. This is when she told me that he actually went to some girl's house. He didn't end up going home at all that day. This man actually spent the night at some girl's house. The whole time, I was trying to call him and text him, and he did not take my phone calls. My best friend even took pictures of his car in this girl's driveway. Since I had this girl's address, I looked her up on the internet. I even found out her phone number because I paid some service online. And of course, I found her Instagram account. She had been posting on her story about hanging out with some guy. But the thing is, she didn't show the guy's face. She only showed his hand. Guess what? I recognize his hand in the picture because it has a tattoo on his pinky. So of course, I took screenshots. Later that day, my best friend followed him to a bar. At this bar, he met up with another girl. Unfortunately, I didn't have any information about this girl. I just knew that she drove a green car. My best friend followed him again the following day. He went to the beach, ran some errands, and then met up with another girl. Yes, we have three girls in two days. This girl was different because this girl was a friend of mine when I lived in Texas and I knew she always had a crush on him but she could never admit it. They went out to dinner and then back to her place. And again, my best friend sent me pictures of everything so I had all the receipts. Side note, I think of my best friend spying on him and it makes me laugh. I hope you can all say you have best friends that are like that. Oh, so here's what I did. I got on the first flight back to Texas and did not tell my boyfriend that I was showing up at his apartment the following day. But guess what I find in his bed? Part two is up. 
story time about how I ghosted my boyfriend of five years. I show up to my boyfriend's apartment to catch him in the act and you'll never guess what I found in his bed. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. My lying, cheating boyfriend had given me a key to his apartment. So I unlock the apartment and make my way towards his bedroom, really quietly. When I walk into his bedroom, I find him curled up in his bed with another girl. He's holding her in his arms, totally fast asleep. And the worst part is I recognize the girl that was with him. It was one of the girls who I used to be friends with in Texas. I walked backwards and closed the door behind me. That's when I just started to cry. I couldn't believe that he had done this to me. While I was working my butt off in LA trying to make a future for us, he was in Texas dating three women at once. No wonder he never picked up my phone calls or even texted me back. So here's what I did. I had printed out all the receipts I had, all the pictures of him hanging out with other girls that my best friend took while she was spying on him. I laid out all the pictures on his kitchen counter and I left him a letter too. I told him in the letter that I could never forgive him and for him to never contact me again. Oh yeah, and that I wanted him to pay me back the $3,000 he owed me. You see, when we first started dating, he needed a loan for his car. I helped him out and gave him $3,000, which he promised to pay me. Obviously, we dated for five years and I never saw any of that money. So aside from him being a cheater and a liar, he was a thief. I left the note and the cards and left his apartment. I went to my parents' house and stayed with him for the weekend. Of course, my boyfriend, I mean ex, showed up to my parents' house and begged to talk to me. My father told him to leave me alone and to never speak to me again. My dad told him that when he was ready to pay him the money, that made me laugh. I was totally crushed. I blocked him on everything, even through email. Of course, he got on someone else's phone and tried to contact me that way, but I never replied. He sends me emails every now and then and promises to pay me the money back. A few days ago, he sent me a picture of an engagement ring. He keeps telling me that I'm the best thing that he's ever had, that he's sorry and blah, blah, blah. I kind of want to reply to him, but I know that that's a bad idea, right? Or should I just talk to him and see what he has to say? What do you guys think? Story time about how my ex broke into my apartment and trashed my entire apartment and ruined every single thing that I owned. This claim is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. I'm not gonna lie, my relationship with my ex is terribly toxic. We actually met each other on a dating app, I know. He was absolutely charming on the first date. Second date, not so much. And third date, he was absolutely awful. But I just started falling in love with him, like literally from the moment I met him. I had it in my head that I was gonna make him a good boyfriend, like me. <laughs> I seriously honestly thought that he would change and just become a better guy. He quickly wanted to be exclusive but did not want to call me his girlfriend. Oh, and he would get jealous about every little single thing. If I wanted to go out with friends, he would get upset. If I didn't answer my phone or text him right away, he would get upset. Mind you, this whole time, he doesn't want to call me his girlfriend. I work as a stylist, but I also model on the side just for some money. Well, he hated this. A week into dating or whatever we were, he told me that I needed to quit modeling. If I didn't quit modeling, that meant that I was for the streets. Because, you know, all models are for the streets. Like the idiot I am, I started passing up on jobs. I even passed up on a Sephora campaign. My modeling agency was really upset. But in my mind, I thought, you know, if I do what he wants, he'll be a good boyfriend. And maybe we can call each other boyfriend and girlfriend. My mom kept insisting that she wanted to meet him, but he said no. Now, when he told me that he didn't want to meet my mom, trust me, I put my foot down. I told him there was absolutely no way I could be in a relationship with anybody who did not want to meet my family. He told me that I was taking things way too seriously. That's when I threw it in his face that he acts like a jealous boyfriend, but still doesn't want to call me his girlfriend. So he explained to me that any girl he talks to has to be only for him. And even if he's not dating you, you still have to be only for him. Ugh. Then he told me that he was dating two other girls. I had a suspicion, but I never thought he would actually admit it to me. I told him that we needed a break and that I didn't want to see him for a few weeks. This made him insanely jealous. He told me that I was a liar and that I was probably hooking up with someone else the whole time I was with him. And yes, I did try to convince him that I wasn't, but he was not having it. I just moved into my new apartment, which I absolutely love. Spent over $3,000 decorating it. I even got CB2 furniture. I made the mistake of giving him a key a few weeks ago. One day I come home from a modeling job and my apartment is completely trashed. Part two is up. I walk into my apartment to find it trashed. At first I thought I had been robbed, but that's when it hit me. It was my ex. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. The walls of my apartment were smeared with chocolate. There was literally broken glass in the entryway, so I could have stepped in glass. All the mirrors were shattered and broken. My television was on the floor, completely smashed, and there was a hammer right next to my TV. This man took a hammer and smashed my television. He did the same thing to my expensive Vitamix blender. All of my makeup was in the toilet. And yes, there was poo in the toilet too. The sink was full of kitchen condiments where he put all of my expensive perfumes. The bathroom mirror was also smashed. My expensive ass CB2 couch was full of mustard and honey. All of my couch cushions had olive oil on them. I mean, the list goes on and on. I pulled out my phone and started taking picture and video. I called the police and my parents and my parents came right away. Of course, I called my ex and told him that I knew it was him and he denied everything. He said, and I quote, 
you're crazy and then hung up the cop that came to my apartment was super rude he said that i must have done something really bad in order to deserve this kind of punishment i filed a police report and they told me that i could sue him so far he does not want to pay a single dime he then admitted to me through text messages that he got the idea from a tiktok video and that some other guy had done this to his ex so far i spent 500 dollars just in cleaning services to clean my apartment i'm living back with my parents luckily a judge made him pay me five thousand dollars still not enough he's been calling me and begging me to get back with him what do i freaking do Story time about how I caught my roommate with my fiance three days ago. This Clarence is not my story time. I was sent to me on Instagram. My fiance and I have been together for three years. He took me on a trip last January and proposed. He's been nothing but an amazing fiance. Families get along super well. My family loves him and he's so kind and gracious to them. On the other hand, my roommate is terrible. He claims to be a model on Instagram, but that's not really what she does. She's actually got a couple of sweet puppies, if you know what I mean. In the past, I've helped her out so much with money because she's always broke. I even loaned her two grand just last month to repair her car. My family hates her and they think she's super toxic. I have a soft spot for her because we know each other since high school and I know that she struggled a lot then. I'm a very kind and giving person, but she's totally taken advantage of that. Funnily enough, my fiance hated my roommate when he first met her. He thought the same thing my family did. She constantly monopolized my time. And if I was out on a date with my fiance, if she needed something, she would call me and ask me to go to the supermarket and pick up apples and stuff like that. About two months ago, I had to put my foot down. I'm in the process of planning my wedding with one of my best friends and my roommate is totally stressing me out. She continues to criticize every single thing that I pick. I asked her to be one of my bridesmaids, huge mistake, and she made a fuss about the dress. She wanted a backless dress, but I didn't want that for my bridesmaids at all. I'm not trying to plan an Instagram wedding here. She was so upset about the bridesmaid dress that she actually didn't speak to me for about a week. I had to beg for her to talk to me. Eventually, she told me that she didn't feel sexy in the dress and that she really wanted something she could shine in. My best friend was with us when she told me that, so my my best friend quickly corrected her and told me that the only person that needed to be shining that day was me because I'm the bridesmaid. My roommate got super upset and told me that she didn't want my best friend coming over to our apartment anymore. Obviously, that was going to be a huge no because she was helping me plan the wedding. So instead, I had to get my fiance to come to the apartment and help me out. My fiance works a lot and he's constantly on his phone. He also travels for work a lot, so I knew that he wasn't going to be able to help me all the time. One day, I come home from work and find my fiance and my roommate sitting on the couch chatting. I actually got really happy because I thought maybe they're trying to be friends now. I wanted them to get along. My fiance and I knew that we we were gonna move in together right after the wedding, so I didn't have a problem with them becoming friends. Fast forward to four days ago. My fiance had his bachelor party and I had my bachelorette party. I had so much fun at my party. My roommate was on her best behavior, but she actually told me that she needed to leave early, which I thought was super strange. I get home from my party at around 3 a.m. I was wondering about my fiance, so I decided to call him. The phone goes directly to voicemail. A few minutes later, I get a message from one of his friends. It's a picture of my fiance and my roommate on the couch kissing. Then I get a phone call from the guy that sent me the picture. He told me he thought I needed to know what was going on. He told me that my roommate showed up to my fiance's bachelor party and that she was flirting with him the whole night. He also told me that she was pressuring my fiance to drink. My fiance has never been a big drinker, so it surprised me that he was even drinking at all. He sent me some more pictures of my fiance and my roommate. They were dancing and chatting the whole night. So I decided to show up to the bachelor party unannounced. When I walk in, there they are on the couch. My fiance was pretty inebriated and he was kind of confused too. My roommate, on the other hand, was totally fine. She jumped up from the couch and asked me what I was doing there. I asked her, what are you doing here? She actually laughed and told me that my fiance invited her. Part two is up. That's when I find my fiance and my roommate sitting on the couch together really snug. Claire's is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. Unfortunately, I did not find them kissing or anything. I asked my roommate what she was doing there. She laughed and told me that my fiance invited her. My fiance was totally out of it since he had been drinking. That's when I pull up my phone and show them the picture of them kissing. They both start to deny it, but I'm like, how can you deny it? I have proof. My roommate told me that she needed to leave and she literally ran away. I actually had to wait for my fiance to sober up for a few hours before he could actually talk. That's when he told me he didn't remember anything. My roommate is refusing to speak to me and told me that she doesn't want to be in the wedding anymore. And I'm like, yeah, of course you're not. The only thing she said was that my fiance came on to her. My family hates him and her now. Parents don't want me to get married, but the wedding is a week away. My fiance swears that she did something to him. He's begging me for forgiveness and I don't know what to do. Please help. Story time about how my husband left me for my sister and married her four days later. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. My husband and I have only been married for two years. Two years ago, my sister and I went on vacation. A few days into our trip, we were at a bar and we met this group of guys. My husband was one of those guys. He basically flirted with us the whole time. And I could tell that he didn't know which one of us to choose. So I made it easy for him. I told him that I liked him and that I wanted him and I to go on a date. So that let my sister know that she had to back off. My sister actually ended up hooking up with one of his other friends that night. 
We all hung out together for the rest of the trip. I started falling in love with him really fast. When the vacation was over, my sister and I went back home. My future husband and I would basically talk on the phone every single day. A few weeks later, he even started talking about moving to my state. I really thought he was totally committing to me because he wanted to move closer to me. Fast forward a few months later, we moved in together. We got engaged and soon after we got married. My whole family was really happy for me and my sister was too. My sister ended up being my bridesmaid and everything was great. She and my fiance ended up spending a lot of time together. I mean, she was helping me plan the wedding and she was my bridesmaid, so I didn't think anything of it. Fast forward to a year later, I ended up landing a great job. This job had me traveling two times out of the week. My husband mostly worked from home. Because I'm such a good wife, I decided to ask my sister to go over to my house and cook for him once in a while. After a few weeks of working my new job, I decided to come home early and I didn't tell my husband. I found him with my sister in the jacuzzi. Part two is... I walk into my husband and my sister sitting really close in the jacuzzi. Of course, they were both in their bathing suits. This clear, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. When they saw me, they basically jumped apart. I could tell they were startled. I stared at them without saying anything for a few seconds. I was angry. That's when my husband jumps out of the jacuzzi and comes to give me a big hug. Side note, he and I never used that jacuzzi. We basically never used it because he never wanted to clean it. And I had even told him that we should just sell it if that was the case. But of course, as soon as my sister comes over, he's willing to clean it so that they can use it. Together. My sister, of course, jumped out of the jacuzzi too. And she offered to serve me some dinner. And basically, I just told her she could leave. That's when she looked at me with her angry face, which I know very well, and she actually did leave. After that, I had a terrible, terrible feeling in my gut. I knew that something was up right away because they jumped apart really fast. They knew they got caught. Because I traveled so much, I knew that this was probably going to happen again. So I did the only logical thing. I bought a baby cam and synced it to my phone. It basically looked like a table decoration, but it recorded video and sound. I put it above the fireplace in our bedroom. And I also put one in the living room. Of course, my husband didn't notice one bit. What do you know? The same day I left on a trip, my sister shows up. The baby cam alerted me when there was movement in the house. Little did they know I was recording the whole thing. Video and sound. Approximately two minutes after she came into the house, they started to kiss. By the way, I was on a train watching this all go down. I wanted to faint. Their faces were basically stuck to each other for five minutes. Part three is up. I see my husband and my sister full on kissing. It's as if their faces were stuck to each other for five minutes. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. They look so comfortable with each other, which led me to believe that this had started a long time ago. By the way, I'm watching all of this go down through my cell phone. I had installed a baby cam before I left on my next work trip. I recorded the entire thing. I knew they would both deny it unless I had physical proof. I was so enraged, I canceled my work trip. I got on a train back home. I was only 30 minutes away from my house. And yes, I was still watching them the whole time I was going home. I jumped into an Uber and had him drop me off a block away from my house. I didn't want them to know I was nearby. I opened the front door quietly and there they were on the couch, still stuck together. I grabbed my sister by the hair and pulled her over the couch. With the purse that was already in my hand, I started hitting my husband. He then pinned my arms down to my sides and told me to leave the house. You heard that right, he kicked me out. Went straight to my parents' house and showed them the video. Then my dad was so angry we actually ended up going back to my house. But of course my husband didn't let us in. Then he showed me the divorce papers. He told me if I didn't sign them that he would take all of my money because ultimately I did make more money than him. My sister was standing behind him the whole time. My dad and I left, and I don't even know how this happened, but four days later they were married. My sister came to my parents' house and told them the news. We fully expected them to be happy for her. He even moved into the house that I basically paid for. Still haven't been able to get all of my things out. Did I go over there and grab my things? Should I sue him? What do you guys think I should do? P.S. My sister's pregnant. Am I the asshole for sabotaging my brother's wedding? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. My brother and his uh, fiance, they've been together for four years and engaged for six months. I hate her. I hate her so much. She is the most entitled woman I've ever met and she thinks that she deserves everything. Her parents are super, super rich. Now my family isn't poor, but we're definitely not as rich as her. She demands that my brother pay for everything, like all of their rent, all of their car payments, every single thing. My brother doesn't make a lot of money and this stresses him out a lot. Her dad offered to give my brother money so that he could basically pay for everything while she thinks that my brother actually paid for it. Even her parents know how terrible she is. She's also extremely jealous. She barely lets my brother do anything and he's basically shut out all of his friends just to 
to not make her angry if he wants to go out with them. This is the worst part. I walked in on her and her friends talking crap about my brother. They were all a little bit tipsy, so she wasn't measuring what she was saying. Even when I came into the room, she still kept talking trash about him. Being the good sister that I am, I grabbed her drink and threw it in her face. Now my brother's not really talking to me. Part two is up. Part 2, am I the asshole for sabotaging my brother's wedding? After I threw the drink in her face, my brother stopped talking to me. He finally heard me out and I told him everything I thought about her. And when I told him that she was talking trash behind his back, he told me that she does that all the time with her friends and that it's just a way for her to vent. I explained to him that she should have nothing but good things to say about him. She doesn't sound like she loves him when she talks about him. By the way, she was telling her friends that my brother was basically a good for nothing and that he didn't earn enough money for her to actually live a good life with him. Because of this, I started sabotaging the wedding in small little ways. For example, I know exactly what dress she wanted, so I called the store and ordered all of them. They're currently out of stock. She went berserk. My brother had to calm her down for like an hour. When I finally apologized for throwing the drink in her face, she asked me to help with the wedding. So she gave me the job of sending invitations. So I decided not to send any to her family. When she asked me about it, I told her I sent all the invitations that they probably got lost in the mail. We all went out to dinner that night with her family and mine. She threw a whole tantrum at the restaurant. She was demanding attention. And of course, everyone was comforting her. She's a total bridezilla. Even her best friend told me that she can't stand her anymore. She also told me I couldn't invite any of my friends because we're all too artsy. Now I need your help to come up with more sabotages because it's actually working. My brother is finally getting sick of her. He told my parents he's not sure he wants to marry her anymore. My hope is that they break up soon. I just want my brother to be happy. What do you think I should do? Story time about how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. This is not my story time, it's sending me an Instagram. Let's call my best friend Rick. Rick and I have known each other since we were three years old. We're actually neighbors and we went to the same school, grew up at the same time, and we did everything together as kids. Most people thought we were siblings. His mom became my mom's best friend and our parents would go to dinner almost every single week. Growing up, we treated each other like siblings. He always watched out for me and had my back when we were in school. But things started to change when we got into high school. Rick started dating a lot of the girls in school. Suddenly, I started to get really jealous. Instead of spending time with me, he would start spending time with his new girlfriends, duh. But we would always go to school together and instead, he started dropping off and picking up his own girlfriend. So so I didn't have a ride to school anymore. Instead, my dad would take me to school. We would always hang out after class and on the weekends. So you can understand this was a huge change for me. At first, I thought I was just jealous because I was losing my best friend. But when I told my mom, she asked me if I was in love with him. At first, I was like, no freaking way. But then I became even more jealous. I was always angry with him for hanging out with his girlfriends. I started missing him so much and I couldn't stop thinking about him. I was constantly checking if he was home or not. I would simply look out the window and see that his car wasn't there. I played it off as much as I could when I would see him. We all happened to go to a party and his girlfriend was there with him. I don't know where she taps me on the shoulder and asks me if I'm in love with Rick. I didn't know what to say. Part two is up. Part two of how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. This is not my story time is sending me on Instagram. At the party, his girlfriend asked me if I'm in love with him. I actually froze and didn't say anything. Then she got right up in my face and asked me again. I answered no and basically ran away from the party. When I got home, I got a text from Rick asking me if I was okay. I told him I was just tired and I wasn't having fun at the party. Then he sends me a screenshot of messages his girlfriend sent him. In the messages, she told him that she thought I was in love with him and that she could tell just by the way that I looked at him. He told her there was no way and that I was just a sister to him. He actually thought it was hilarious that she would think that. God, if only he knew that it was true. He then told me that he needed to stay away from me just to not make her jealous. This hurt me so much. He was choosing her over me. She actually ended up cheating on him and they broke up. A few years passed by and during that time I dated other people, but I couldn't stop thinking about Rick. Guess what I did? I moved two cities away just to avoid him. Part three is up. Part three of how I've been in love with my best friend for six years. After I moved away just to try to forget him, it did not work. I just couldn't stop thinking about him. After a year, I moved back to my hometown. I decided I would be honest with Rick and tell him how I really feel about him. Well, it's been a year since I moved home and I still haven't told him anything. Girls fall over themselves just to try to date him. And everyone he's ever dated literally looks like a model. And I know that I can't compete with that. Now, I know I'm not ugly or anything, but I'm definitely not the model type. I decided to open up to Rick's mom and I told her how I felt. She's actually really happy that I told her the truth. And she told me that she always suspected it. She also told me she would love Rick and I to date. I told her that I just didn't have the courage to tell him how I really felt. I mean, imagine you going up to your crush and telling them that you like them. It's so hard. She also told me Rick wants to get married soon and finally settle down. Apparently, he's sick of dating around. So basically, he's looking for a wife. I don't want to sit on the sidelines and watch him with somebody else the rest of my life. I just can't muster up the courage to tell him. Rick and I had dinner a few nights ago, and he told me that he actually likes someone from his job. I almost started crying right then and there in front of him. I'm hoping he doesn't ask her out. I want to find a way to tell him without me dying of embarrassment. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Or maybe I just shouldn't tell him at all. Maybe I can find someone else. What do you think? Story time about when I stuffed my face with edibles before dinner with my wife's parents. Recently, I traveled to Denver, Colorado with my wife and her parents. As a resident of a non-legalized state and as someone who is too much of a pussy to regularly buy illegal drugs, the thing I was looking forward to most was the chance to buy a fancy legal tree. 
What could possibly go wrong? So the first thing I do upon arriving after successfully ditching the in-laws is drag my wife to a nearby dispensary for a shopping spree. And oh my God, it was just like in my dreams. Tons of different options and neat little sample jars and a team of helpful stoners walking me through the various strains. Are you looking for a mellow body high or do you want something that gives you a bit more pep and energy or are you just hoping for something light to take the stress off? Yes, yes, and yes, I replied eagerly, like a fat kid in a candy store and request an eighth ounce of about seven different options. In hindsight, if I learned anything from this experience, it is that my math and science teachers never taught me basic information like what's an ounce or how much tree can a person consume in a single weekend. Sure, I can tell you when two speeding trains leaving separate stations will collide or recite Avogadro's number, but it turns out that none of that information is particularly relevant in getting high in a responsible and efficient manner. At this dispensary, I also learned that you can't actually smoke in public places, including the hotel that my wife and I were staying at. As a result, before leaving, I begged my wife to buy some edibles that I could munch on until we found a place to properly get lit. After expressing shock as to the absurd volume of drugs that we were buying, unlike me, she is the product of private school and understands the imperial measurement system. She relents, and we walk out of the store with what felt like a dump truck of weed, plus a small package of seemingly innocuous ginger snap cookies. When we finally get back to the hotel room, I tear those bad boys open, only to find about a dozen tiny cookies roughly the size of a quarter. What the F, Denver? Seeing the skepticism and hunger in my eyes, my wife warns me that I should go easy and look at the back of the package first before trying one. Dose size, one half of a cookie. I read silently as I start taking microbites from the edges like a giant chinchilla gnawing on a sunflower seed. But what kind of a savage only eats half of a cookie? So a second later, I covertly pop the remainder into my mouth. And then I quickly stuff another two cookies in my mouth for good measure the minute my wife turns her back. We may not have legal tree back home, but I routinely devour an entire package of Milano's in one sitting without breaking a sweat. Your move, tiny ginger snaps. About 30 minutes later, we're in the backseat of a parent's rental car on the way to dinner. And that's when things start to go tits up. My stomach growls, loudly and angrily. My wife looks at me with inquisitive eyes that seem to say, diarrhea, but I merely clutch my tummy and mumble something about altitude sickness. You didn't eat the whole cookie, did you? She asks, 10% in genuine concern and 90% seething in irritation. Of course not, I respond, avoiding eye contact for the remainder of the car ride. A few minutes later, we're climbing out of her parents' rental car and heading into some trendy farm to table restaurant. I don't remember how I made it to my seat and I don't remember even looking at the menu, but I do remember the concerned look on the waiter's face as he asked me if I was doing all right. Keep it together, man, I say to myself. My wife's sudden groan suggests that I may have also said that to the waiter. Things are going downhill fast. The waiter nods sympathetically, takes our orders, and then heads to the next table. The moment he walks away, my wife is staring daggers at me. I start to worry that the jig is up. You are sweating from your entire face. She says both with pity and disgust. Not quite knowing what to do, I reach for my napkin and proceed to blot my cheeks, nose, neck, chin, and forehead. Things only go downhill from here when my wife's mom looks at me with concern and asks if I'm all right. Part two of when I stuff my face with edibles before dinner with my wife's parents. At this point, my wife's mom looks over at me with some concern. Are you all right? She asks kindly. Yeah, the food's just a bit spicy. I reply, far too quick to realize that we had literally just ordered and there was nothing on the table except for a basket of dinner rolls. My wife kicks me under the table to grab my attention. Bathroom. Now. She hisses. Get it together. I reluctantly get up from the table and head for the toilet. After splashing several handfuls of water on my face, I approach a urinal and start to pee. Now, one of the more disconcerting effects of those tiny ginger snap monsters is feeling that time has become untethered from reality. As I'm peeing, I start to get the very unsettling feeling that I have been taking a piss for the better part of an hour and that my wife must be pacing around the restaurant worried about me. But deep down, I know that this is absurd. I've been peeing all my life, sometimes multiple times a day. I've probably taken more than 50,000 leaks and it usually only takes about a minute at most. So given that my typical pee is no more than 60 seconds and given that it feels like I'm about halfway done, that means I've probably only been standing here about 30 seconds, right? But the guy at the urinal next to me doesn't respond and instead starts shuffling away from me midstream like a startled penguin. I try, albeit unsuccessfully, to break the eye contact. After finally finishing, I again splash some water on my face before returning to my seat, making sure to apologize to the table for being gone such a long time, just in case my math was off. Next, I try to briefly engage in small talk with my wife's father, but I am far too high to understand what either of us is saying. Not wanting to start laughing uncontrollably at the wrong moment, or really at any moment, I figure the safest idea is to nod my head periodically and drink a ton of water. Nothing cures mental fatigue like water, right? To my wife's horror, I stand up, grab my water glass, and thrust it out to the waiter, who unfortunately is on the opposite side of the restaurant. But he turns out to be really cool and, after making his way over to our table, tells me he'll do his best to keep me stocked with ice water for the rest of the meal. He also helpfully suggests that if the dinner rolls aren't too spicy for me, I should probably eat one or two so that I'm not sitting there on an empty stomach. Smart man. However, after going through all the bread on the table and three glasses of water, I start to get worried that I need actual food to offset the growing paranoia from these tiny ginger snap devils. Do you think I should flat down the waiter again and ask what's taking so long? I suggest helpfully to my wife. What? We literally just ordered three fucking minutes ago. And at that exchange, my wife loses her cool. How many cookies did you eat? She demands. Whoa, easy there, Torque Mata. I respond, somewhat horrified at her outburst. I had a few cookies, but keep it down. I don't want your parents to know how fucked up I am right now. Really? They're sitting two feet away from you. They know. I look up and for the first time, I notice both of my in-laws just staring at me for what felt like an eternity. At that point, my wife's singular focus was on getting me out of the restaurant. So after a few spastic, two-handed waves goodbye to my in-laws, she rushed me to the door like a secret service agent evacuating the president. My night after that was a whirlwind of barfing and groveling mixed with a few vain attempts at getting handsy back in the hotel room. But being the absolute awesome sweetie that she is, my wife stuck with me through the whole nightmare, whispering over and over again in my ear, please don't die, we have a mortgage.